This is the Ferretti Yachts 500. It replaces the 450. So this is now the smallest Ferretti flybridge that you can buy. The boat's got a pair of 550 horsepower Cummins QSB 6.7 diesel engines on V-drive shafts and the price starts from €860,000 excluding VAT. And we're going to do a full tour of this and we're also going to take it out on the water and sea trial it. Have a quick look at the stats first so you can hit pause and take those in. But we'll carry on with the tour. So this particular boat has got two options back here, the hydraulic bathing platform and this passerelle that's extended at the moment. Both of those are options. With the hydraulic platform, it's where you keep the tender as well. You'd have chocks down here so the tender can be lowered down into the water. Back here we have some storage. It's filled with photography equipment at the moment, but quite useful to have that here on the bathing platform. And then as we step up into the cockpit, there's access from both sides, or boarding gates on both sides. They've really tried to maximise the space here. They wanted to make the most of the outdoor living spaces aboard this boat. And a key feature is this dinette. So it's in table form at the moment, but the table drops down, the leaves extend out. There's a couple of supports here. This backrest flips the other way, and then you have an infill cushion, so you can make a big double sun pad back here when the weather's right. The engineering is good as well. I like the fact that the mooring gear is hidden away under these lids. You can see you've got a nice big cleat, you've got big substantial fairly, and you've got winches. So if you're more stern too like this, you can easily tighten the lines. I like the fact you've also got a rope bin here as well for tails and it drains off. If you've got wet ropes, you can stick them in there and they'll drain off. Obviously you've got that on both sides of the boat. A little windows down here either side there is a crew cabin option on this boat we'll have a look at that later on but we'll stick to the decks for now and we'll move up forward nice side decks on this boat i better just point out this dedicated spot here for the boat hook that's quite handy they're always a pain to store so quite nice to have a proper spot for it moving forward is easy i think rails are a little bit low but you can sort of steady yourself here on this coming it would be quite nice to have a railing up here as well but as you get further forward, the railing sort of comes up to meet your hand. And here at the bow, you have pure sunbathing space. You can see they've got flip up backrests, so you can sit a bit more comfortably, but all three of those go flush as well. When you're moving along, you can put them completely flat. And then we're round to the bow area here, where you obviously have access to the windlass and the anchor mooring equipment. anchor locker here which has got all the chain gathered in there it'd be nice if this was partitioned off so you could put ropes on one side or fenders on one side chain on the other so they don't get mixed up and it would also be good to see a hook or something that you can tie fender tails to so they don't drop right down into the locker we move around the other way nice big tall tow rails on this boat so even though the railings are quite low you have got tall tow rails here so you feel reasonably secure but again this area is just crying out for a, a nice handhold you can grab onto that and steady yourself as you walk around the decks so here we'll head up to the flybridge improved staircase over the 450 it was a bit steep on that boat but they've, they've worked to try and make access that bit easier on the 500 up we go teak deck on this boat that's an option it looks really smart but some may not want it because it'll get quite hot up here obviously being so exposed that said there is a bimini on this boat it's collapsed at the moment you can see it's collapsed here in front of the the helm but that just swings up gives you a nice amount of shade up here on the flybridge dominated by this big seating area again the table extends pull out these supports and then it opens up like that to a really good size you can stick another chair here as well so one more person can sit around the table wet bar here as well this boat's got the optional grill you've got the sink those are just the covers for the instruments at the helm 
and the helm station. Clean, upright, really stylish, typical Ferretti steering wheel. But they've definitely worked to make it more adjustable, more comfortable. It's got an adjustable sliding bucket seat. But as I said, it's sort of more designed for standing up and driving. Really, that is the Ferretti way. Notice you've got some storage down here, cup holders underneath. You've also got deeper cup holders up here that you could also chuck loose items in, which is quite nice. You could have another Simrad screen here if you wanted as an option. So you've got some engine information because as it stands, you can either have engine information or the chart or the radar. You'd probably want another screen up here. Pure sunbathing space adjacent to the helm. You've got these backrests so people can sit alongside the, the helmsman if they want to when the boat's on the move. I quite like this feature, just a nice teak tray with fiddle edges so you can chuck phones and sun cream and sunglasses in there and know that they're not going to slide anywhere. You do feel sort of on the boat, not in the boat. It's got quite low sides but that feeling will probably be improved if you put the bimini up. So that's the top deck. When we head back down the steps, we will go to the interior. Now as you move into the interior, you find a typical Ferretti trait, which is that this window will pop up and connect up to the overhang here so that you have this sort of unbroken connection between the cockpit and the saloon. Obviously the door slides off to starboard. And the galley is quite small on this boat, and that's partly because they've put this focus on cockpit space, so the galley is pinched a bit. And you've also got quite a a long dinette here. This is quite a big internal living space. Again, it just means that space in the galley is a little bit pinched, but it's fine. And you've got a good amount of surface here. Obviously, if you take this lid off, well, there's some stuff in the sink, but you can see the sink there. You lose that's very heavy, <laughs> but once I know you have got a decent amount of surface to provide food and though it's covered in stuff at the moment you have got space there to to arrange things as well and this is actually where your cooling space is you've got even though it's under counter a good size freezer there so you've got your fridge here as well have some storage in here for crockery glassware and we have a bit more storage above as well for the glassware too four burner induction hob. It's also got some extraction. And we have microwave and it's even got space for a little dishwasher as well. It's quite a nice addition for a boat of this size. As we move in, there's a bit of a step up here. That's to create headroom in the master cabin. So you need to be careful of that. But of course the ceiling also goes up here. So here in the middle of the saloon, headroom's okay above six feet and this is a really nice comfortable space i like the fact that they've used cloth material as opposed to vinyl or leather a bit more comfortable hard wearing as well looks really good and there's two styles you can have here you can have a contemporary style which is this sort of gray more modern lighter woods or you can have the classic style which is darker woods but this is nice because as well as the the natural light in here it sort of helps brighten this saloon because these styling lines do impede on the the window line a little bit Obviously the television is here to starboard, pops up at the touch of a button. You can see it goes back down into this section behind the couple sofa here. And then we get to the lower helm station. And again, for Ferretti, my experience with Ferretti is that really the helms are all about standing. And of course you can stand here, but they've actually gone to the trouble of fitting an adjustable seat. It slides, it bolsters, not something that they may have done in the past. So that's quite nice to give you a bit more flexibility at the lower helm, but again, it is really designed for standing at. Now, the view is okay, but it's not a single piece windscreen. You've got this quite thick mullion down the middle, and these are really quite thick on this side. It's quite easy to lose things on the, on the starboard side when you're out at sea. So you might want to poke your head out the window and, uh, and check before you do any hard turns. It's worth pointing out that this boat also has electric blinds. So hit that button. And down they come. Got them this side and then slightly longer run down that side. And under here you have some storage. Quite a convenient spot just to chuck charts, books, things like that. As we move down to the lower deck, quite a steep run of steps. But what's nice is that this area is open to the windscreen. So you get a good amount of natural light down here. It does make it feel 
more open and more spacious. And then we'll head straight back amidships to the full beam master suite. And though there is a little bit of intrusion here, the floor drops down so that even when I go to the end of the bed, I can still stand up fully. And again, even though there's a step around this side of the bed, the ceiling goes up. So even down this side, again, I can, I can stand up fully without having to stoop and you could sit up in bed as well. It's a really nice cabin this. Yes, there are a few level changes, but it's really well finished. Nice attention to detail. It feels quite special. Good storage as well. Big hanging locker here. And that is mirrored on the other side. Big TV as well at the end of the bed. More storage there. Actually have storage all along here as well. Very useful. You've got a side table alongside both sides of the bed. Again, they've got a little storage drawer in them. You have control of the blinds from in here. This cabin's got electric blinds, so you can control them from the bed. You've got reading lights, repeater switches for the main cabin lights as well. A little sofa here where you can sit down, put shoes and socks on, just uh, take the weight off. And of course, you've got the hull windows, which we're not getting the best of here in port, really. You're gonna see the best of those when you're anchored somewhere. But you can see how much natural light they bring in, and there's opening ports as well, which is always nice to get a bit of natural ventilation into the cabin. Now one thing Ferretti hasn't done is use sliding doors on this deck. Now, it's difficult because it means that you have to obviously work them into the bulkheads, but you can just begin to see how much space the doors take up on this level. Something like the Absolute 50 Fly, they use sliding doors, especially in the bathrooms. Just means that you're not opening the door into the bathroom, gobbling up lots of space. It's well finished though, really nice stylish sink and tap, good storage, you know, full standing headroom with a rain shower head and an opening port inside the shower so you can let the steam out. Proper glass door, it's all really nicely done, but the use of sliding doors would just make this area feel a bit more spacious. See, this is the, the day heads. Now that doesn't have a sort of permanent separate shower cubicle, you have this circular cubicle here, so you slide these doors around and you do have the rain shower, but it all feels a little bit pinched, a little bit tight compared to a boat that uses sliding doors. And this door gives direct access from the VIP cabin to the day head. So they can use it as an ensuite in this cabin, but it's shared with the twin cabin over to starboard. This is a pretty decent size actually. Headroom's very good. Nice that they managed to include a side table, even for the person in the top bunk. You have control of the heating in here or air conditioning, I should say charging points etc reasonable size berths and it's got a bit of storage as well of its own in a hanging locker and it's just across the hallway for those in this cabin to to get to the bathroom to shut that door but it's nicely finished it really is and though that door hands are quite chunky there magnetic which is quite slick so you just close with a magnet and then the magnet detaches and open they come We'll have a close look at the VIP cabin. Again, the door gobbles up a little bit of space in here until you're inside, so you come in and then you shut the door. And it's not too bad here at the end of the bed. Reasonable amount of floor space to get changed. Headroom is good. A full standing headroom here at the end of the bed. And actually the bed is set at quite a good height, so it's easy, easy enough to climb into. You've got this area here where you can put jewellery and phones etc and it's fiddled so they can't slide off. A bit of storage that runs along both sides of the bed. A bit annoying that it's only charging on one side so only one person can charge a device at night. Should be a bit frustrating. Again you've got opening ports within the side windows and you've got an escape hatch here. If you need to get out in a hurry. Hanging storage on both sides. And that practically, and in fact, the one to starboard is slightly bigger. You've also got a repeater for the fusion stereo system up here, so that guests can control the the music in this cabin, which I'm sure they'll appreciate. They have their own television in here as well. 
So yeah, it's nice to spec, it's just not the most spacious cabin in this class. When you come back out, you do notice the detail, the under lighting here under these steps looks really smart. It's a really well built boat, this. It feels solid, the woodwork is really smart. It doesn't creak, it doesn't groan as you walk around. It feels solid underfoot. Ferretti certainly know what they're doing when it comes to, to building boats, even of this size. They'll only build 10 a year, even though this is their smallest boat, they will build nine, ten a year. So they're not charging these things out at a, a huge volume. I mentioned the crew cabin earlier, and this is how you gain access. So you remove the cushions, you flip the backrest, and then you have this hatch here. And this is an option if you don't have the crew cabin, it's just a big storage void. But as you can see, this one is set up as a crew cabin. You've got a sink down here, you've got the toilet. There is an opening port, there's opening ports both sides actually. There's some cleaning equipment in here now, but that's your berth. I mean, it's very cozy, but you know, it's an option if you want it. Otherwise, just really useful extra storage. Engine access is via this quite large hatch here in the cockpit. And there's actually a pull out ladder, pull out ladder here to make access easier, but you can equally drop down into it if you need to get down in there in a hurry. So here we are between the engines. We've got the generator here. Underneath that, you have the sea keeper. That's an option. And you can see fuel filters down here. Attached to the fuel tanks, which you can see back here. They've got clear bulbs as well, so you can easily inspect the fuel with eye and just make sure there's no sediment in there and the fuel is, is clean. Reasonable amount of space around the engines. You can get around all sides pretty much. Headroom is pretty tight once you get into this area though. And you notice this is a V-drive arrangement. It's what allows them to, to get the big master cabin in. You can see the shafts down there shooting back the other way. So come out that way and then shoot down in this direction. And they've got quite a compact footprint, these little Cummins. So they're reasonably easy to work on despite it not being the most enormous engine room. But it's all very neat and tidy down here. Everything is labelled as well. You can see down there there's labels on all of those pipes so you can see exactly what they're what they're for, what they're flowing to. Yeah, very tidy installation. And good to see that you've actually got a side gauge for the fuel level as well. Not something you always see. Radar, you can present the information however you want, but it's really clearly presented. It's 
are nice and close to the helmet as well. It's easy to reach whether you're standing or sitting. You have some ventilation here as well, so you can pop this window open if you want a bit of natural ventilation. It's a really pleasant boat, uh, place to, to drive the boat from. Of course, the beauty of a flybridge boat is that you can maneuver and drive from up here. Exactly the same controls, of course. You have the joystick up here. It's being used as a bow thrust at the moment. Obviously from here, you have completely unobstructed views. So probably is the place to come in out of berths from just because the view downstairs is pretty restricted. Also means you can communicate with your crew out here. You have that small window by the helm downstairs, but there's no side door, so you can't get out and help and crew like you can on some other 50 footers. Ferretti's philosophy has always been that you should be able to stand to drive a boat from any position. And you can see this upper helm station, it's upright, the wheel is set quite high, the throttles are set quite high. So of course you've got a seat, but if you want to stand to drive the boat from this helm, it's easy. In fact, the helm is almost more angled towards standing and driving than it is sitting, which is the other way around on most other boats of this size with a flybridge. Well, thank you very much for watching our tour and sea trial of the Freti 500. If you enjoyed this video, please do like it and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of our content in the future. See you on the next one.